In this safety video, we will discuss crane construction capacity. Only those employees qualified by training are allowed to operate equipment and machinery. Operators must be qualified, certified by one of the following methods. Certification by an accredited crane operator testing organization. Qualification by an audited company program. Qualification by the U.S. military. And licensing by a government entity. The operation of the equipment includes rated capacities, load charts, recommended operating speeds, special hazard warnings, instructions, and the operator's manual, which must be readily available in the cab at all times for use by the operator. The operator must not engage in any practice or activity that diverts attention while actually engaged in operating the equipment. The operator may not leave the controls while the load is suspended, except when the operator remains adjacent to the equipment and is not engaged in any other duties. The operator has the authority to stop and refuse to handle any loads until a qualified person has determined it's safe. The 8D director must understand the assembly process as well as disassembly procedures. Prior to starting the project, ensure that the crew members have a thorough understanding. The outriggers or stabilizers must be fully extended or as specified in the load chart. Outriggers must be set so that the equipment weight is removed from the wheels. When floats are used, they shall be attached to the outriggers. Mats or blocking must be sufficient in size. This sustains the loads and maintains stability. Equipment contact with power lines remains one of the top concerns of crane and rigging professionals throughout the world. The use of fall protection equipment must be used for employees who are on a walking or working surface with an unprotected side or edge more than 6 feet above a lower level. When working near power lines, if any part of the equipment is operated up to the equipment's maximum working radius in the work zone could get closer than 20 feet to a power line. Otherwise, you must de-energize and ground through the utility company or owner. Where equipment is out of service, a tag must be placed in the cab stating that the equipment is not to be used. The work zone must be identified by defining the work zone as the area 360 degrees around the equipment. Barricades or caution lines must be used to prevent employees from entering the fall zone, which is considered the area directly beneath the load. Safety devices are required on all equipment included. Crane level indicator, boom stops, jib stops. Equipment with foot pedal brakes must have locks. Hydraulic outrigger jacks and hydraulic stabilizer jacks must have an integral holding device and check valve. Equipment on rails must have rail clamps and rail stops and a horn. Equipment that has had modifications, or adjustments that affect the safe operation of the equipment must be inspected by a qualified person prior to initial use. Signals to operators must use the hand, voice, or audible method. And a direct line of sight. Hand signals must follow the standard. This concludes another safety video. Please like and subscribe for updates.